class will learn how to make this beautiful make made gathered gown with basque effects okay so this is the basque part and it's really really beautiful if this is what you like to learn kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial thank you Okay, so to make this dress i already drafted my basic body patterns and i already have a tutorial on how to draft this on the channel so if you don't know how to do it up to this level you should check that tutorial out so now i'm going to keep my back panel aside now and then i'll work on the front panel this is the pattern that we are trying to achieve okay so the first thing now is to create the basque corset waistline that we have there and to do that, the only modification that I did here from my basic bodies is that I created my under bust. Okay, so as you can see, this from the shoulder point here, my bust point is 10 inches and the under bust is 14 inches. So on that line, I ruled a line. On that 14 inches mark, I ruled a line. So I'm just going to try to use this gray marker to indicate it. So on this point here, on the under post point, I took a dart of one and quarter on both sides. So one and quarter on this side, one and quarter on this side. Then I, call, I connected it to my post points using this curved line that you are seeing on both sides. And then I connected this back to my dart leg. Okay, that is the only difference that we have from this and our basic body. So now to create our basque corset line, if you look at this very well, you will see that the and these basic bodies i stopped this where i want the length of my of my bass corset to stop it's not reaching my hip line if you look look at this the hip line should be around here and the bass corset is stopping here so the actual hip line measurement that i'm supposed to use to draft this corset is supposed to be around 24 inches so i subtracted 23 inches from the 24 inches so i made my length 21 inches as we can see from here so now to create my basque corset because the basque is effect is not too deep not too obvious you can see that it's just a bit around here so here i'm just going to be going up on this side i'm going to be going up by two inches from my m line and then from there i will slant it to this point to create my basque effect Okay, so this is the lower part of the corset part of the dress, and if you look at the upper part also, you notice that from the under bust, that is why I created my under bust line. From the under bust, it just slanted towards the upper part like this. So to create that for my under bust line here, I'll go up by one and a half inches, one inch or two inches, depending on what you want. But I'll be going up by one and a half inches, and then from the under bust line, I'm going to be connecting it like this okay. the green marker is not so clear so i have my bass corset from here to here so from the lower part i went up by two inches connected this like this and then from the upper part on my bust on my under bust line i went up by one and a half inches and then i slanted it towards the under bust because that is the shape that we have for the dress so now to replicate this on the back bodies, I'm just going to place my back bodies like this. And then from my arm O, I'm going to measure where I have this line, this effect here. So this is around 4 inches here. And then I'm going to measure 4 inches from my arm O here also. And then I'm going to make that into a straight line also. I'm doing a straight line because I want my back to just be straight. Okay, the back corset part, I don't want it to have any V shape or anything. If you want it to have a V shape, you can go with that. So remember, we're going to be sewing this together. For me to be able to sew it together, my back has to my back has to start from where my my front is. I don't know if you understand that. Remember, we're going to be sewing it. So the back cannot be this long while the front will be short like this. So where my front length stops. I'm going to be noting that also. That's two inches away from the M line. So I'm going to be marking two inches away from the M line. 
So I have two inches upward like this, and then I'm going to replicate the two inches upward here also, and then I'm going to be connecting them together. I hope that makes sense. So this is going to be the corset part for for my back, while this from here to here is going to be the corset part for my front. So now I'm going to be detaching the corset now so that we will have smaller piece to work with. Okay. So if you just look at the picture of the thumbnail, you will see that this is the shape that we have for the corset in front. It's we bent towards the upper part from the under bust area on the upper part, and then it has this small bust effect on the lower part. And for the back, like I said. I don't want it to be G, so I just made it straight like this. Okay, so this is our corset part, and I'm going to be keeping it aside so that we can work on the upper part. So the upper part is called the meat made effect. So that effect, there are several ways you can actually achieve it. You can do an off, you can achieve it in form of an off shoulder, but for me, I'll be doing mine with a shoulder. And maybe in another tutorial, we can do the off shoulder part of the milk made blouse. So now, the first thing I'm going to do is to create the opening that I have at this center front. And to create this opening now, from where my neckline stops here, if you're okay with this neckline, you can go with it. If you want your neckline lower, you can also reduce it. But I just have the normal 3 by 3 inches neckline. So on that point here, I'm going to be going inwards by 0.75. And then using my curved ruler, I'm going to be connecting that to the lower part of my up to the lower part of my body. Okay. So I'm connecting that. Okay, so from the lower part, I just went up by one and a half inches. And then I use my curve driller to connect it. So the green marker is not showing well. So I'll just use this. Okay, so I've created that shape there. So now to introduce volume to these bodies, now I'm going to be doing slash and spread method. So from this center point here, I'll rule two lines. You can do three, you can do four if you want a lot of volumes, but two lines is okay for me. So here, I'm going to be ruling the first line here, okay, and then I'll leave like one inch between them, and then I'm going to be ruling the second line. So these new lines that I ruled, I'm going to be slashing them open, then I'll spread them. So first one is, I'll cut out this shape that I have as my center front, I'll cut out my neckline, and then this new two slash lines, I'm going to cut through them so that I can spread them on another pattern. Okay, so now it depends on how you want to spread these patterns now. For example, I think I'll just be spreading it on the upper part here. You can see that I've spread this, but if you want your spreading to get to this point, you just need to cut through this line so that you can pull them apart and then it will give you even more volumes from your from to get to, to give you more volumes on the lower part so that you gather this back to the corset part of the blouse but i just want this volume on the upper part here in fact i'm not going to be putting any introducing any volume to the back if you want your back to also be gathered on the neckline you can also do some slash and spread here so that you introduce the volume to the back but i'm not going to be introducing any volume to the back for this tutorial also that was why i added a zipper allowance here as you can see so i'm going to be having the zipper passing through it so that it will be easy for the wearer to wear it so now i'm going to be taking this to another paper now and i'll spread it on the new paper Okay, so I've spread this on the pattern now, and I've decided that I want some gathers around the lower parts here, yeah, around the lower parts of the of the of the upper bodies also. So that was why I, I cut this open. Then I'm going to be introducing small volume around there, around 1.5 or 2 inches. So now I'm going to be holding this with the masking tape. 
and I'm going to be spreading this upper part as much as I want so I can have like a space of one one or one and a half inches in between each spread so now I'll take my masking tape and I'm going to do that so I've decided to spread this on another paper, another color of paper so that we can see this very well. So I have like one and a half inches spaces in between and here I opened it up by one and a half inches too. And I connected my neckline and my shoulder points back. So now I'm going to be cutting out this pattern and then I'm going to be placing this on my fabric to cut out my fabric. And like I said, I'm going to maintain what I have on the back. So I'm not going to be adding any volume to the back, but you can also add volume to your back if that is what you want, okay? You just do the same way we have done this. So now I've cut this half now, and then I'm going to be cutting out the dart on my corset, okay? So now these are the front and back corsets. The dust that we have here, I'm going to be cutting it, but before I cut it, I just want to label it so that I don't get confused. You can see this is even looking confusing to me. So I'm just going to introduce my pattern so that I can label it well. Okay, so here I have my center back and I have my side back here. Here I have my center front. And I have my side fronts here. So now I can cut it out. And then I'm going to mark this as the upper part so that I'll know that this upper part is what I'm sewing. And here as my zipper allowance. So now I'm going to be cutting this out. And then for the front also going to cut it so here too i'm going to be marking this as my upper part for my front so all of this now i'm going to take it to my fabric now and then cut it out on my fabric so i have this and this. So I'll cut it then bring it back to show us. So I've got to cut this on my fabric and I'm using a soft crepe fabric. So I added allowances where necessary and I'm going to set this at that. Then I closed my back that also before cutting it on my fabric. So here now on my shoulder area, I'm going to pleat this. Okay, so that I'll have my actual shoulder measurement. So I'm doing this, I'm leaving an opening here because I want that gather around the shoulder area also. But if you don't want it, you can decide to just close your shoulder that by just removing this. So if you remove this now and you place it here. You close your shoulder that so that all the opening that you're going to be having will be on this part of the blouse. Then your shoulder that will be actual, your actual normal shoulder that then you curve your neckline from here. But because I still want my 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 gathers okay i want to introduce a a some pleats around the shoulder area also that's why i decided to leave it like that so here now i'm going to be notching these spaces in between so that i will know how to gather it then i'll gather it back to my actual shoulder measurement so that i can sew it to the back then on the neckline i'm going to be cutting like a facing a small facing that's going to serve like a channel for the rope that I'm going to be passing through my front so that I can gather this front back to its original size. So I'll be using that rope to gather it. Now I'm just going to be cutting the rope so that I can create that channel. Okay, so I've cut out all the facing now. I also cut out the facing for this center front. And then I cut another one for the neckline of the two back bodies. Just like we cut our normal facing. So I'm going to go to the machine to sew them now. I just want to show you what I'll be doing. So this is the center front. I've detached it and this is the opening that we created. So I cut this fitting for this center front opening. I'm just going to be sewing it like this. Okay, I'll place it like this. I'll be sewing it outwards like this. So I'll sew it in a way that by the time I turn it out, I'm going to top stitch it to the front. 
So I'll just place it like this, wrong side of the main fabric facing the right side of the facing. I'm going to sew it. Then after sewing it, I'm going to turn it to the front and then I'm going to top stitch it. So after that now, the casing that I created for the front where my rope will be passed, I'm going to be sewing it. So this is my casing. This is for the first one. The same way I sew this, I'm going to sew it like this and then turn it out to the front now and top stitch and this is for the other side okay so i cut two of it and then for the back also i cut out my facing for my back so i'm just going to be slashing this open into two remember the two back are separate so i'll go over to the machine now and then sew in my facing for the back also then bring it back so that we'll continue with the corset part this video is already long so i don't want it to be too long so before i go i just want to explain that for the center front and back also I'm, i want to take everything together i'll be sewing them together just like we draw we sew our normal posture okay just like we join them together you can see with the label you will see so this is the center front it was caught on fold so now I'm just going to be placing the center front onto the center back like this on the sides like this and then I'm going to sew it. I'll sew the next, the other one to it also. The center back and the side back also. I'm going to be sewing them together Then I'll bring everything back so that we can continue with the tutorial. Okay now, so now this is my front part now and like I said, I've piped the neckline as you can see. And then I also created the casing here where I'll be passing my rope. So I made a long, okay, so I'm just going to be passing my rope. Okay, this one of the rope, I made two of it. Remember, we have two channels and then I'm going to be passing it through one of the channels like this. And all the way to the neckline. So here, when I pass it out here, I'm going to sew it here so that it can hold it for me then I'll be able to drag it. So the second rib I'll be passing it through the second neckline and this is what the front is looking like. So here now on the shoulder area I run the gather stitches. Remember it's wider than the back. So I'm going to be gathering it to what I have on the back. You can also pleat it from your from your pattern remember we just have this excess here so you can also fit it here you just, or you just gather everything back to your original size so i'll be doing that and this is the back so for the back also i've gone ahead to so this is my back i've gone ahead to cut facing for it and i've also faced the back bodies also for both front and back so now quickly i'm going to move to my the corset part, the bust corset part. Remember, we have the front like this. I've already joined it together to the center front to the side front, like I said. Now I want to hard bone it to this. So it's not compulsory to hard bone it to it. You can hard bone it, you can just hard like an illusion to it. You don't have to use a boning proper. But I'll be using this boning for it. So now I'll be hiding boning to the side and also to the center front. You can hard more if you want. It's just help you to shrink the waist very well. So now I'm just going to be measuring the amount of boning that I need. And after measuring it, I'll be wrapping it with this same fabric that I have. Let me adjust the camera up here. So I'll be wrapping it with this same fabric that I have. So I have around one and a half inches of bone fabric here. And the bone is just going to sit right inside it. So what I'm going to do now is to take it to the sewing machine now. On the right side, I'm going to be placing the bone in against it like this. Then I'm going to sew it at the tip okay so now i've sewn it at the tip and this is what i have you can see so after sewing it at the point tip i'm just going to fold it over to the right side like this and then i'm going to use it to wrap around the bony so you can see i'm just wrapping this fabric is very soft so i'm going to be wrapping it multiple times and when i get to the last one like this i'll fold it in and then i'm going to place it on top of it like this then i'm going to sew it so when I sew it, this is what I'm going to have. Okay, you can see that it is neat now and it is bending towards this side. So 
the way it is bent, you are not going to be adding it to your wing line so that you not to, you know what you want to achieve is for it to help you snatch your waist so that it can just press it in. So you have to follow this curve that the, the bunny is curved like this because you know it is from a pack like this which has been wrapped for so long, so it's already taking this form. So you just have to follow the form that it has taken to place it on your fabric so that it doesn't bulge out. So I'm going to be doing that for all the cases, uh, the casing that I want to do. And you can also do a casing. You don't have to wrap your bone. You can just do a casing. If you are using plastic bone that I can also on like this and you just insert your bone in it. So I'll take it to the sewing machine now. And then I'm going to sew my bony here, here and here. And then I'll probably add to the back also. Then I'll bring it back to show us. Okay, so I'm going to have to add bony to this. As you can see, it's already curving in what's just like we want it to be so this is the front and i made sure that my bony did not get to the hemline remember i'm still going to sew this to the front body so you should stop your bony like half inch before your hemline so these are the back okay i had that bony to the two back also and like i said you can add more to it to just help you to give structure to your waist so this is the second side of the back so now I've also gone ahead to join my front and back together on the shoulder and the small allowance that I had it, I just printed it on the front shoulder. So this is what the front is looking like now and this is the back. So the next thing is to take my front and sew my uh, corset part to the main dress on the front and also on the back and then I'm going to shape the side before we now add the gathers to it. Okay, so I've gone ahead to add my corset part to the upper part of this and this is the back, this is the front and I've also gone ahead to sew it using the seam allowance, the one inch seam allowance that I left. So this is almost done guys. The next, the last thing to do is just, and you can see our bust effect. By the time we put this up on the mannequin, you will see it's better. So the next thing to do is just to take the measurements of this waistline. Remember this still has the gathers going around the waist so i'll be taking the measurement of this waistline and then whatever i have here i'll be multiplying it by three and i'll use that to cut my gathers okay so i have around 34 inches here so 34 inches multiplied by three is going to give me okay so that's giving me around one hundred and two inches so i have one hundred and two inches here on full it's very long and the length I'm working with is by 30, 26 inches, okay? So that is what I have left to make up my full gown length. So now I'll take this now and gather it around this hemline. Then we'll take it to the mannequin so that we'll see what we have. Okay, so I'm going ahead to add my gathers to it. And then I close the back. So I'll be adding zipper to this opening that I have at the back. And you can fix whatever sleeve that you wish to fix to this, and your dress is ready. Okay, so this is where the dress is. Well, guys, just look at the corset part, you can see how divine it is. You even appreciate this more. I will we'll take it to the mannequin so that we can see the fitting. But this is looking really gorgeous, it's beautiful. Now, I'll take it to the mannequin and I'm going to show you what this looks like. And this is the make made effect on the dress so you can gather it as much as you want this is the rope and this is the over shape we created at the center front of the neckline you guys look at the basque effect of our corset it's so sleek this is really really beautiful i hope you give this a try you can see the basque effect is just small and this is the gathered part of the dress dress is really beautiful and I'm here to put a zipper to fix a zipper on this dress I'm just going to turn it because I held this with a pin so this is the back part of the dress you just need to fix your zipper and this is the corset part of the back also and you can see that it is also really really snatched and beautiful so like I said I don't want any v-shape on my back so i just made the back straight as against the basque effect that i have in front and this is the gathered part of the back also this dress is really beautiful let us know if you have any challenges with this and to answer you in the comment section 
I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, let us know in the comment section. Like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.